All right, you guys, it is time to spill the beans because we have been keeping a secret. What is up you guys? My name is Kira if you are new and in today's video I just kind of wanted to sit down and talk with you guys for a minute because we have been keeping a secret. Well I guess it's not really a secret. We just really weren't choosing to divulge any information yet until we truly knew for sure there was a chance of this being like a temporary situation. And so if it was, then we just would have gone about, you know, telling you guys in a different way. But being that this is going to be more of a permanent situation, then, you know, we decided to just hold off, I guess, on sharing the news until we make a official decision. So again, if you guys are new here, we are a family of six. Uh, my husband and I, and our three children live in our house here in San Antonio, Texas, and we have a family member by the name of Paul that lives with us. So that's why I say we're a family of six. We have three grown adults here in the house, and then my 17-year-old, who is pretty much an adult, and then my two little kids. To be honest, that is more than I can normally handle to begin with, but we do have some pets. So we have Ruby. She is is eight years old and she is our American bully and she has been like really beside herself for the last month or two because we recently just put down our dog Dorothy so Dorothy was about 10 years old and it was just a very sudden thing it went from woke up in the morning to her not feeling well by the end of the night we had put her down so it was like a whirlwind of events and Ruby just kind of really hasn't been the same but she she is an amazing dog. She kind of started out a little rough, but as an adult dog, she is truly amazing. And then we have Oliver. So Oliver is our new kitten. Uh, we got Oliver for the kittens, for the kittens, oh my goodness. We got Oliver as a kitten for the kids as a Christmas present this year. Uh, Vanessa over at Lemonade Mom had somebody in her neighborhood that had found a pregnant cat and held the cat and you know waited for the cat to have its kittens and then was giving the kittens away so we were able to get one of the kittens and it was Oliver speaking of Oliver he's approaching come here baby um and so we absolutely love him and we had when I tell you literally zero intentions of expanding our family at all uh I am Finally getting the opportunity to have an empty home. It feels really, really good to send the kids off to school. I didn't think that it would at first. I thought I was going to feel a little bit of anxiety about sending them back, especially since I was very adamant last year about not sending them. So I really thought this year, you know, with the mask law and all of that, that I would feel, you know, bad for my kids going back. But they are so amazingly resilient and they are enjoying themselves and really, really, really absorbing already in just the first couple of weeks of school. And I'm so happy to see it. And it makes me happy to know that the things that were bothering me that I thought thought would bother them or is not bothering them so it's putting my mind at ease a little bit and I feel like once we get into a good rotation I'm really going to be able to get my house in order here during the times that they are gone I will be able to organize and clean and decorate like I was thinking about Christmas trying being able to wrap and everything all during the day like all these things that I normally don't get a chance to do because my kids are there I'm going to have the house free to be able to do all of those things. I thought about all the surprises for our ELF, just in case you have ears around, like just so many different things that I thought about that I will be able to really put a lot of effort into because they, they will be there. Uh, so I really didn't want to take leg like, on any additional responsibility. Like I 
<laughs> very content in where we're at right now. But while I was away on Long Island, I received a phone call again from Vanessa over at Lemonade Mom. She seems to be like the rescue pet guru. I even made a comment to her that they were not Pokemon and you cannot save them all because she just, it comes from such a good place though because her heart is so big and she has been fostering puppies for, uh, I want to say a good couple of months now, maybe around April or May, she started fostering for a fostering company that she had seen like I, I believe again it was something on Facebook I swear she needs to stay off some of those groups but I believe it was like a neighborhood group and they kind of put out like a SOS for a mom and her six puppies that were going to be put down if nobody was able to foster them and her huge gigantic heart just couldn't handle hearing that that was going to happen and so she took them in and she began a relationship with this fostering agency and so uh she has done a few fosters now uh, for them and like i said she's built quite the relationship with them and they had put out i guess an ad for another you know an advertisement or another sos about you know another dog and she had called me and said are you ready, you know, are you healed enough from Dorothy that you're ready for another dog? And I was like, nah, I'm not doing another dog, especially like no puppies. We are done like factory, child factory is closed. Like, you know, maybe another cat cause they're super easy down the road, but nothing else. And she said, well, I just sent you a picture. Can you, you know, check the text message. And so I checked the text message and she sends me this adorable picture. I'll pop it up right here. And she says, this dog is going to be put down at noon today if nobody is able to foster them. And I said, well, V, I'm not even home from Long Island for like another week or whatever. Like, I don't even know if I could help. And she said, I'll take him in for you if you want to foster him. But look how cute his face is. And I can't see him be put down today. So I said, all right. The best I can do for you is at least forward the picture over to my husband and see what he has to say. Like, this is clearly not a decision about fostering a dog that I would take lightly without speaking with him first. So I sent him over the picture. And he calls me, he's like, oh, this dog's so cute. What's with the picture? So I gave him the lowdown really quick about what I just told you guys about Vanessa. And I said, so I told her I would call you and I would see what you had to say. <laughs> he said, well, if you were calling to have somebody talk you out of it, you're calling the wrong person. So right there, I knew, I swear, it's the Capricorn in the two of them. Because Daryl would have a million kids if I wanted to and a million pets. Of course, he works 60 hours a week, so he's not usually here to help with the chaos. But he would just add to the chaos over and over again. He adores his children. They are his life. He would have a million of them and he would have a million pets. Like that's just who he is. And that really must be the Capricorn personality because Vanessa is exactly the same way. And they are just days apart on the birthday calendar. So maybe that's just where that comes from. But I said, really, babe, like, not gonna try and talk me out of this at all and he was like absolutely not i wanted another dog it's you who said no so i kind of like molded over for a minute before i called her back but essentially we did say yes so i know vanessa mentioned in a video that we were gonna foster the dog that she had and even some of you have even said hey Vanessa mentioned you were going to foster a dog, but I haven't heard you say anything. You know, what's the situation with that? We just wanted to wait because immediately my kids thought we were keeping this dog. Kids don't understand about fostering and all of that. They did not understand that we were going to give this dog back. And immediately 
they got attached to him. And I knew that was going to happen because they really mourned the death of Dorothy. And they mourned the death so tragically because it happened tragically. There was no forewarning. I mean, yeah, she was getting old. She was 10. You know, it took her a little while to get up off the floor. But I, I didn't see her not making it another day. I didn't bring her to the emergency clinic thinking she would never come home and that I would never be able to even let the kids say goodbye. So th their hearts have been like in with giant holes in them. And Jake left for New York a month before the rest of us. So he left the day before Dorothy passed away. And so Vanessa was going to drop this dog off on the day we came home. So Jake would have literally never been in this house but more than 12 hours without two dogs here. And he was giddy about it. Like when I showed him the picture that Vanessa sent me and said, hey, we're going to foster this dog when we get home, but don't get attached because we're not keeping him. We're just saving his life. Then somebody else is going to adopt him. He didn't hear me say that. He tuned all of that out and he started bouncing around my mom's house, literally <laughs> like giddy schoolgirl laughing over this picture in my phone. And I knew that somewhere it was just mending his heart because he already told me he was nervous about coming home because he had never been in this house without her. And, you know, he had a routine about coming down every morning and laying on the bed with her and stuff. So I really just believed that this was going to help him somewhere mend his heart, like all of them. So I said, all right, maybe it'll be good for Ruby too. Like, yes, let's will foster him and but like I said I knew the kids were gonna fall in love with him and Vanessa duped me well they kind of duped her and then she duped me but she told to me that it was a lab retriever mix which is still a pretty big dog but that's Daryl's favorite he said he wanted a black lab next like that's what he wanted so to hear that this dog was a black lab he was already over the moon but now the vet thinks that there's great dane in him this boy is a big boy like we just brought him to the vet and he is i think four days shy of five months and he's 50 pounds he's going to be a monster <laughs> he is already as big as ruby but let me tell you Ruby has a smile on her face that is like nothing I have seen in a long time. Even Dorothy didn't bring that spunk out in Ruby because Dorothy was older and she was already kind of like a lazy bitch and she didn't get up at all. And Ruby was always kind of like, come on, Dorothy, come on, come on. And she just didn't want to do anything. So event eventually Ruby got like that too. But now she has really just opened up like a flower she is so happy she's back outside in the backyard back outside like no walking at night she's still been a little leery like we've had to walk her sometimes at night but during the day she's back outside she's following him out they're bouncing all over the yard they're rolling around they're playing they have such great chemistry it is really really nice to see and i'm really excited so when Vanessa first got this dog, the adoption agency, the, I keep saying adoption agency, I, I can't, literally I cannot put into words, uh, the foster agency, they had a name for him that they were calling him Henny, H-E-N-N-Y, but I guess that was a little like tongue tying because it's not really a popular name, so she kept saying Benny, which kind of makes sense because her dogs are Bella and Buford and like the bees are just there. And so it just was easier for her to say Benny. So she suggested to the foster home to call him Benny because it was easier to say. And so on even on all the paperwork, it said Benny Henny, uh, which I thought is freaking hysterical. But um, I wasn't really crazy about the name Benny, N not any kind of disrespect to her, but uh, it just didn't roll off the tongue. It was hard for me to say it, I guess. I don't, I don't really know. Um, but 
I always feel like choosing your pet's name is something that's important. It's like choosing a child's name because it's the name that you give them for all the time that you are going to care for them. So we even had a theme going. Our first dog that Daryl and I had was named Oz. And so then when we got Dorothy, we named her Dorothy. I mean, it was almost inevitable. As soon as we found out that we were adopting Dorothy, she was also a rescue. When we found out that she was a girl, Daryl said like, obviously we're naming her Dorothy, right? And I was like, yeah. And my grandmother's name was Dorothy. I mean, we called her Dottie, but you know, sometimes we, you know, called her Dorothy, but we kind of stayed with the theme. And so then when we got Ruby, we stayed with the Ruby slippers kind of thing. And we kind of stayed with this Wizard of Oz kind of theme and stuff. And we just like to name our pets. So we took some time and we spent a couple of days getting to know him. We were calling him Benny because that's what he had been, you know, gotta call him something can't call him dog right so we called him Benny for you know a good couple of days and we tried to see if he was a good fit for the house and we did decide that we weren't gonna say anything until we if till we decided if we were gonna keep him or not because once the kids saw an interest Daryl and I started talking like all right well we can foster to adopt so do we want to adopt him and I I really just didn't want to go that route but he did and of course and so did the kids but he's really grown on me and we chose a name so his name we stayed with the b name so that it was still like that buh sound when talking to him but we ended up calling him bruno and bruno actually comes from somewhere i came up with the name and i really love where it comes from it has sentimental meaning to me so i'm curious in the comments if you guys can guess where his name comes from but his name is bruno and we have decided to adopt him he is going to be a giant beast i don't know what i'm getting myself into he's going to eat me out of house and home worse than jacob and again i really didn't want like a puppy he's a lot he's big he doesn't even realize how big he is he jumps up he's going to need a lot of training uh, i even thought about you know getting a, an actual trainer and sending him to obedience school so that we don't have any issues because he's going to be so big he's already bigger than maya and mason i don't want him to hurt anybody so i want him to learn boundaries but he's already fitting in so well with the rest of us that i just can't see kicking him out so thanks v for bringing yet another pet into my home but we are now officially a family of nine three adults three children three pets and chugging along so i want to bring the camera down and let you guys meet bruno but i did just want to sit down and tell you guys first that we have officially added a ninth member to our family and i am officially crazy but everybody is happy everybody is smiling and that's all that matters to mom so let's go downstairs we're gonna meet bruno all right sorry you guys my father-in-law is actually in the hospital so after I turned off the camera before I noticed I had missed a call from my mother-in-law and she wanted to call and update me and my father-in-law and then she wanted to FaceTime with the kids and before you knew it once we got off the phone with her I realized what time it was and I needed to start dinner and then after dinner became tubs and bed and now I have to start lunches for school tomorrow but I did want to at least get you to meet Bruno. Bruno come here buddy. I give you love and affection. <laughs> this, you guys, is Bruno. Okay, okay, buddy. We say hi to everyone, Bruno. And this, you guys, is why it was so good to end up with a puppy because look how happy Ruby is. Like, she just doesn't stop playing. It is so nice to see her get up and move around and play and get excited again. It is really, really good. Bruno, hey. You stop, you say hi. You say good boy. Bruno, Bruno. Good boy, shake it off. Good boy, shake it off. Good boy, good boy. Hey, all right, all right. But it's time for bedtime, right? Bruno, come here. Oh, yes, Ruby. Yes, Ruby. Yes, Ruby. Oh my goodness, yes, Ruby. Okay, Ruby. 
Yes, use the code. And you. And then there's you. Oh boy. Oh, lots of dog faces and dog love. Yeah. Yeah, but it's time for you guys to go to bed. Yes, it is. But that is the most that you guys are getting of Benny Henny Bruno. <laughs> for this time but he will definitely be in videos to come because he is officially now a, a member of our family so thank you guys so much today for watching wish me luck with this massive beast subscribe if you are new give this video a huge thumbs up i love you guys all so much and i will see you guys in the next one bye guys bruno say bye bruno say bye Bruno say bye. Bruno say bye. Bruno say goodbye. Ruby say goodbye. Bruno say goodbye. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Bye. <laughs> good job, Ruby. Good job. Good job. Yeah, such a good job. Okay, it's time for bed, you guys.